All right, so welcome back to Real Analysis at Night. Um, in this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of open sets for metric spaces. And uh, so we've already kind of encountered open sets before. So we've seen open intervals, right, that look like A, B, right, which is the set of, you know, I don't know, X where a, a is less than X, less than B. So it's exclusive on the endpoints, right? So there's actually a much more general concept of an open set, which this becomes a special example of. And we can define this um, notion for all metric spaces, not just for the real line, okay? So let me just state the definition. So these are examples of open sets. So here's the definition for arbitrary metric spaces. This is uh, 13.6. Um, so let S D be a metric space. Uh, let E be a subset of S. We say E is open if um, for some, or rather, sorry, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so we say a point S naught in E is interior to E if uh, there exists an R greater than zero, emphasis on greater, uh, such that um, the set of points in the whole space S um, which are within distance R away from S naught um, is contained in E. Okay, so this is a bit much to parse. I'll give some examples in a second. Uh, but before I do that, let me just sort of finish stating this. So um, write, we write E with a little circle for the set of all interior points of E. Um, we say E is open in S. Also emphasis on in S, okay? That's actually an important part of the terminology here because openness is actually relative to the ambient space that you're considering your set to be a part of. Because you can take any open, you can take any set, any set, not necessarily an open set, you can take any set, any subset of a metric space and then consider it a metric space in its own right. And then it becomes open in itself while not being open in the original ambient space that it came from. So I'll give some examples of that later. Um, we say E is open in S if the set of interior points of E is all of E itself. So every point is interior. Okay, so that's the definition of an open set. So let me uh, give some examples. So for example, um, open intervals. Why are these, oops, why are these actually open? So let me kind of draw a straight line here. And well, let's say this is A and here's B. Okay, so we're looking at an open interval. 
So let's say we select a random point, okay? Like, I don't know, X, right? Then, so the question is, can we pick a radius, right, around X so that the entire interval of that, of that radius, the entire open interval of that radius is contained within the larger set that we're looking at, right? So in this case, obviously, yes, I could, you know, uh, this could be X plus R, X minus R, right? So for at least for this point X, I can. So this X is clearly interior, right? But what if I just move X, you know, what if X gets really, really close to the edge, right? Close to the edge. Let's say X is over here, okay? Can I still do it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit cramped over here, but yeah, I can definitely pick a small enough radius that the, uh, the interval of that radius is still contained within the entire, right? I could do it here, I can do it here, you know? Anywhere, anywhere within this interval, no matter how close it is to either of the edges, I can pick a small enough interval around it that that interval is contained entirely within the larger one, okay? So um, here's an example of a set which is not closed, okay? Um, so these are open. Um, closed intervals A, B, at least where, um, you know, A and B are real numbers. Uh, those are not open. Although I should emphasize that being open and being closed is not a dichotomy of sets. So there are some sets which are both open and closed, and there are some sets which are neither open nor closed. It's very important to remember that, extremely important. Um, so, but let's see why these closed intervals are not open. So I'll show you. Um, so now we have A, B, right? So if we pick an X somewhere in here, we can still find an open interval around it, which is contained in the overall interval A, B, right? That's no problem. But uh, the problem happens if we actually pick the endpoint, right? Now that B is in the set, I'm free to pick it and ask if it's an interior point, right? And the problem is no matter how small you make the interval, right? Right, no matter how small you make it, there's still a little piece of the interval which is stuck outside the, cl the overall closed interval, right? So, um, so B is not an interior point. So since there are some points here which are not interior, similarly A is not interior. No matter how small you make this interval, there's gonna be a little piece of it sticking out, which is bad. So uh, B is not interior, and that means that uh, since it's a point of the set and it's not interior, that means it's, that the set is not open, at least not open in R, right? So uh, those are a couple examples. Um, before, no, actually, let's uh, go ahead and move on. So, so now I am going to... Um, give some properties of open intervals. This is 13.7, what they call a discussion. It's not really a theorem. I mean, you could consider it a theorem, but uh, it would seem silly in the context, the broader context of math to call this a theorem. So um, one can show that S is open in S for any metric space S, right? Um, and um, the empty set is open in S and the union of any 
collection of open sets, no matter how many you have, is open. And lastly, the intersection of um, finitely many uh, open sets is open. Um, so the first two here are kind of trivial in the sense that like, okay, S is clearly open in S because if you pick any point in S, and just take a ball of any radius around that point. We call those sets balls, by the way. So um, given uh, S in S, uh, sometimes the notation, I don't know what notation they use in the book, but for now I'll, I'll use this notation, the ball of radius R around S is called BR of S, and that's the set of, um, you know, T points T for which the distance between S and T is less than R. It's the open, open ball of radius R, okay, in a general metric space. So this is kind of a side thing. I might be using this notation in the future. Um, We'll see. I think sometimes there are other notations for this. But uh, yeah, so anyway, so uh, where was I right? Um, yeah, so if, if you take the whole set S and pick any point in it, you can take a ball of any radius and that ball will be a subset of S obviously because I mean, it just has to be. S is the entire metric space. So everything is a subset of S, right? every ball of any radius around any point of S is a subset of S. So clearly S is open. The empty set is open just because it has no points. So, you know, I mean, there are no points in the empty set which could fail to be interior, right? It, that's actually called vacuous logic. So both the empty set and S are considered open sets. And then these two things I'm not gonna prove because they're an exercise. But what I do want to do is um, I want to point out, so it says finitely many open sets here. That's important for the intersection, right? For unions, you can just do whatever you want. You can use as many open sets as you want. You can just keep unioning them, you know, all day long, and you'll always end up with an open set again. But if you intersect, you better stick to finitely many, you know, open sets in your intersection because it's possible to intersect an infinite collection of open sets and end up with something that isn't open. So that's gonna be a lecture question. Lecture eight, question, sorry, this is an eight, question one. Give an infinite intersection of open sets in R which is not open, okay? So take a bit of time to think about it and make sure to include the answer on your homework um, and pause the video. Okay, so uh, if you, hopefully you were able to come up with some example here, I'll show you the one, uh, probably the simplest one I can think of. So, um, the simplest one I can think of would just be, say, the intersection from n equals 1 to infinity of the intervals negative 1 over n to 1 over n, right? This intersection, uh, the, the whole intersection of this, uh, of all of these open intervals, is just the set containing the point 0, right? And of course, this isn't open because actually, if you take a ball of any radius around 0, um, you're going to end up with some points that are not. so. Um, BR of zero is not a subset of the set zero for any R greater than zero. Notice for, um, for the specific situation of R uh, of the real numbers, right? The, the real line in the real line, BR is just like the open interval. So here it would be like negative R, R, right? The open interval from negative R to R is obviously not a subset of this, 
which only contains the number zero for any radius greater than zero. So this is not an open set. So this is an example of why you can't take infinite intersections of open sets, okay? All right, um, I think that's it for this video. Uh, in the next one, we'll talk about closed sets.